I'd like to remind folks that even though natural disasters get the most media attention, home fires are actually the most common disaster anyone may face. Every day, many of us partner together to help community members who've been displaced by home fires. And we can all work together to make sure that people prevent home fires and prepare for them. I encourage everyone to use this month to get ready for disasters, including home fires, by making a plan to stay safe, gathering important supplies, and knowing how you'll stay connected. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who is here today. I'd like to thank the museum for their continued partnership. To all the families who come out and are going to walk away more educated and prepared to deal with an emergency. Um, I'd also like to thank all of our partners who are here with us today and who will share some words with us. To our elected officials who support our programs and agency. Uh, and a big thanks to the friends in the media who are making sure that our message on preparedness gets out as wide as possible. And lastly, I'd like to thank your Emergency Management Commissioner, Zach Eastwell, and his unwavering support for our community programs. Commissioner, would you like to come up and say a few words? Over here. Bear with me. Hopefully it'll be well behaved because I have bribed them to be well behaved. Um, so thank you, Deputy Commissioner Schaefer. Uh, where's Ready Girls? Ready Girl here? Where is Ready Girl? Not yet. Not yet. Is Ready Girl here? Not, not here not yet? yet? Not yet. Not yet. Not ready is, ready Girl is not ready. But ready Girl <laughs> is going to be making an appearance when she is ready. Uh, my colleagues in emergency management, uh, a big hello to all the amazing kids and families that are here, and a big thank you to all of our partners, the Children's Museum, the Red Cross, members of the Assembly, uh, we have dishes here. We have our friends from FEMA here. Uh, uh, really great to see all of you here uh, to talk about and support preparedness. Uh, so September is National Preparedness Month, and I couldn't be happier to kick it off uh, than with this wonderful event organized by our incredible community engagement team. Uh, with a very special thank you to the Staten Island Children's Museum for hosting this incredible event now for over a decade. And I think we've all seen over the last couple of years how important it is for us to be prepared. Um, and especially to do everything that we need to make sure our families are prepared. So we're doing something with uh, National Preparedness Month. Uh, we're doing something with National Preparedness Month where each week we're focused on something a little bit different. So this week is all about knowing your risks. Uh, what could disrupt your daily, uh, your daily life? whether it could be a hurricane, a pack crowd, or something else. Um, once you think about and know what you might face or what type of hazards exist for your family and your community, you can then start putting a plan together. And that is the focus of the next week, which is having a plan. Um, do you have a way of getting your family back together if you're separated? Do you have a evacuation routes? Do you have the essentials that you need? Uh, then we go into Community Preparedness Week. Uh, this is the month's third team. Uh, and that's really a reminder that all of us are in this together. It's, uh, it's a time to talk about getting to know your neighbors, finding ways to support each other. There's some great uh, resources available on our website, nyc.gov uh, forward slash ready And And then finally, uh, we wrap up the month by learning uh, how to protect what you love. Uh, think about the things that you cherish in your life, whether it's your home, your family photos, important documents. Again, the Ready New York website has a lot of great information for you to help put together a plan and making sure you, your home, your family, your loved ones are more resilient, which is what it's all about. Uh, we've also had some fantastic events this month. You can learn more about them by going to on.nyc.gov forward slash prepare 24. Um, next Thursday, I'm very excited about this, we'll be hosting a pet and service animal preparedness fair in Union Square Park. We'll even have a virtual and in-person events for older adults, houses of worship, businesses and organizations. So this month, there really is something for everyone in the New York City. 
And just a okay. couple of final reminders. Uh, one is we are in the middle of hurricane season. It's really important that everybody knows your zone. Uh, you can find out what zone you're in by going to nyc.gov forward slash know your zone. Uh, know what zone you're in uh, and know uh, what your evacuation plans might be should uh, we have a hurricane impact in New York City. And then finally, I would not be the emergency management commissioner if I did not talk about Notify NYC, which is our public notification system, available in 14 languages. It's our, including American Sign Language, it's our primary means of getting information out to the public. Everybody should sign up for it. Uh, you can sign up by going to nyc.gov forward slash notify, by calling 311 or by downloading the app. Um, so really, last thing to say is it's really important to be prepared, have a plan. Every family is different. Uh, my wife and I, we have four kids, uh, three rescue dogs. Uh, that's quite a plan that we need to put together. Uh, that's quite a go bag that we need to have to put together. But every family is different. You know, occasionally our mother and my mother-in-law stays with me. Uh, you know, so if you have an older adult, uh, you might need to have a different set of things that you're focused on than if you have young kids or if you live alone. Every household needs its own emergency plan that works for them. Uh, so some, this is great. This is a great month to think about that, to prepare. And uh, thank you to the team here for making this happen. And uh, Herman, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, and thank you for everything you do every day to keep the city safe. Um, next, I would like to bring up someone who has a long and storied career that started with the NYPD before moving over to NYSEM as our Chief of Staff, First Deputy Commissioner, and Commissioner before becoming the Deputy Regional Administrator for FEMA Region 2, Staten Island's very own Andy Diamora. Andy? Thank you, Herman. Hey, everybody. I don't know how my mother will for 30 years. That was some plan. I guess I didn't plan well. But anyway, uh, so excited to be back home and back at the Children's Museum. Always a great event. And the National Prepared this month, it means so much. Um, as we hear the kids playing behind us. So Commissioner Iskell really captured it all. So I would just want to give you little things that FEMA is doing. Uh, now, every community should be prepared and have a plan. But every year, FEMA concentrates on a few different communities to really spell that out. So this year, FEMA uh, is reaching specifically out to uh, the Asian community and also Native Hawaiian or Pacific Islanders. And unfortunately, uh, the 65% of Asian Americans do not believe taking a step to prepare will make a difference in a disaster. So in this area specifically, the Asian community is growing, growing, growing. We really want to encourage them to have a plan and to work with uh, local leaders like the great organization New York City Emergency Management is and the community outreach to really know what a plan is. So this year's theme is to start a conversation to close the preparedness gap and address barriers across these communities. In addition to starting a conversation about preparedness, it's important for communities to know their risks. Download the FEMA app and make a plan today, and you could do that by visit ready.gov slash start. And as Commissioner Isco mentioned, notify NYCs in those multiple 14 languages. This will also have uh, resources that are available in several languages targeting the Asian community, especially Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Tagalog, and Vietnamese. So what is the Ready Campaign? I think we all know what it is. Since 03, FEMA's Ready Campaign has really been outreach to the community, individuals, families, small businesses, and communities to prepare for disasters. And the goal of this campaign is to show the simple, tangible steps that we could all take to make our lives better during an emergency. So this, this campaign is, needly great, is greatly needed because obviously we're in the heart of hurricane season. So nearly 80% of Americans say preparation for disasters is very important to them, yet only 37% of Americans have taken steps to prepare for them. So we're here today to really force that message. Prepare, have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you know, you're destined to fail. The government, we're all in this together. No one could do it alone. Whether at the federal level, state, and local, we need the community also to be part of it. So this year's focus again on Asian American communities reflects the continued importance of reaching the growing community, which since 2000 has grown 81% to up to 18.9 million people in the United States. And so while past campaigns focus on general preparedness messaging for broad audience, over the last few years, we have focused our campaigns on the groups that feel the effects of disasters more acutely and who say they are less prepared. According to FEMA and the Air Council's research, they include communities of color, Spanish speakers, older adults, people with disabilities, and those with limited financial resources. And this m reminds me to mention that FEMA Region 2 not only covers New Jersey and New York State, but also the Caribbean and Puerto Rico and the United States Virgin Islands. 
So since Puerto Rico is the sixth borough, as I always said, of New York City, there are a lot of routes in the five boroughs to Puerto Rico, and we want to encourage everybody that has a connection there to really encourage your family, friends in Puerto Rico and in the entire Caribbean to be prepared. We're in the heart of hurricane season. We've had a couple of storms come through. Some have missed, some have skirted, and some have done, caused some damage, but we really want to stay focused as we remember Hurricane Maria from 2017. And finally, uh, as Commissioner Iskell said, you know, know the types of disasters and emergency that can happen where you live so that you can stay safe. Talk to people in your community to see what they've done to prepare and make a plan to keep you and your family safe and prepared. And of course, download the FEMA app at ready.gov slash start. And she's not here, but always listen to Ready Girl. So when she comes, we're always going to listen to her. So again, thanks so much. Thanks for being here. Herman? Thank you so much, Annie. It's great to see you again. Um, next, we are honored to have the CEO of American Red Cross Greater New York Region, Doreen Thoman Howe, with us today. Ms. Thoman Howe has extensive experience working with executive, as an executive with agencies such as the Department of Social Services, Department of Health, and extensive experience working with nonprofits. It is always great to see a fellow social worker out there leading. So, Doreen, could you come up and say a few words, please? Thank you. Good morning. Thank you all for being here today to help make sure New Yorkers prepare for emergencies large and small during this preparedness month. Everyone here knows that disasters can happen at any time, anywhere, and often without warning. And while we are in, as everyone has mentioned, an active hurricane season until November 30th, I'd like to remind folks that even though natural disasters get the most media attention, Home fires are actually the most common disaster anyone may face. Every day, many of us partner together to help community members who've been displaced by home fires. And we can all work together to make sure that people prevent home fires and prepare for them. I encourage everyone to use this month to get ready for disasters, including home fires, by making a plan to stay safe, gathering important supplies, and knowing how you'll stay connected. Be sure to customize your supply kit to the individual needs of your household. If you have young children, remember formula if you use it, and diapers, and maybe a special toy. If you have pets, remember leashes, carriers, food, bowls, litter, and litter boxes. To help protect your loved ones, Download the free Red Cross Emergency app for customizable weather alerts and expert advice in both English and Spanish. You can also help your community to better prepare for disasters by giving blood, taking a Red Cross class, or becoming a Red Cross volunteer. Please go to redcross.org to learn more about doing those three things. And don't forget to sign up for the free emergency app from NYC Emergency Management <laughs> to get crucial information during an emergency. Whatever the emergency, Red Cross volunteers will be here to help. Thank you for your partnership and support. Thank you so much, Doreen. Um, as the commissioner noticed, our office and the Staten Island Children's Museum has been working together to bring the preparedness message to our Staten Island families for over a decade. It is such an incredible partnership, and today we are joined by the museum's executive director, Dina Rosenthal. Dina, could I have you come up and say a few words, please? Good morning, everybody. I'm delighted to be here, and I hope that you're enjoying all the whistles, and even though Ready Girl isn't here, I'm loving all the Ready Girls and ready boys that are walking around with their costumes. And so we're thrilled to host this event as it does align with our mission of sparking curiosity and creativity in children and their caregivers. But we believe that learning um, should always be engaging and hands-on and today's activities provide a wonderful opportunity for families to explore, discover, and learn valuable skills together. I always take this event as a reminder for myself to check that I have batteries in my flashlight at home and that I also have water and a warm blanket in my car for my family and my pet. Um, and so I hope that today inspires young children and their families to make a plan to stay calm and to be prepared. Um, on a 
Another note, I just want to recognize that today is actually the last day that the museum is open for four months as we get uh, an HVAC project underway to help make the museum better prepared for an emergency and also to make us safer and more comfortable. So we hope you enjoy today's beautiful weather and we will see you all back in January of 2025. Thank you so much. We suck it in just under the wire. And congratulations on doing some mitigation work. I love it. <laughs> Um, okay, th and uh, we look forward to many more years working together. At Emergency Management, we couldn't do our work without strong partnerships from our communities. Today we are joined by someone who represents one of those amazing partnerships, the Staten Island Community Act Communities Active in Disasters, or some may know as Staten Island Coad. This collaboration is run out of the nonprofit Staten Island and represents over 150 nonprofit organizations on Staten Island and stands ready to help their communities during and after an emergency. We are joined by Michelle Bascom, who is the Director of Program Development and a great partner of ours. Michelle, please come up and say a few words. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for hosting us to the St. Allen Museum, Children's Museum. Thank you to NYSEM uh, for kicking off Emergency Preparedness Month right here in Staten Island and for inviting our participation today. Our coalition brings together local organizations who are committed to responding in times of disaster. We know that in times of crisis, folks will look to the spaces and the people who they trust the most. So it's our work to help equip and empower those trusted spaces and essential service providers with the tools, the training, and the situational awareness when it counts. Whether it's our collaborative efforts to get critical resources like PPE and hydro barriers directly into families' hands, or the work of our medical ecosystem subcommittee who helps both nonprofits and healthcare providers prepare for and communicate during the unexpected, we're committed to building preparedness where it matters most. We know that many residents are doing the work and taking the steps themselves to prepare uh, their households and their families. So we aim to honor those efforts by helping to ensure that their service providers at the local level will be there to support them in the aftermath. At the same time, we recognize, recognize excuse me, that there are a great number of residents who are not in a position to fully prepare. So we strive to enhance the capacity and resilience of our nonprofits and our faith institutions here in Staten Island who are so relied upon in times of need. We've been able to sustain this work in large part thanks to the support of city initiatives like NYSEM and their Strengthening Communities program. Through that program as an active cohort, we've been able to improve our network communications, do some digital asset mapping, and build our own capacity as a coalition through training and critical partnerships. It's often said, we've all heard it, to put your own oxygen mask on first before you aim to help anyone else. So that's what we do at the COAD. We help organizations prepare their staff and their operations during blue skies so that they're ready to respond when things turn gray. And we're excited to see so many Staten Islanders here today doing the same, improving their individual preparedness, readying to keep their families and their neighbors safe. Thank you again to NYSEM for their leadership and for continuing to help make Staten Island a better, safer, more resilient community. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, we have two of our elected officials here. I'm going to start with Paul Metricano from Senator Jessica Scarcellis, Scar sorry, Scarcellis Fenton's office. office. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul from Senator Scarcellis Fenton's office. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I want to thank the Staten Island Children's Museum for having us in, in their home, welcoming us to their home. Thank you, NYSEM, for promoting this event and all the uh, vendors who came out, also the Red Cross, FEMA, every uh, vendor who came out for our national service. It's really important to uh, make strong connections to the community. It's also very important that to make aware of disasters that are coming up. So we want to thank everyone for coming out and making where, uh, national preparedness important for the community. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, and lastly, we have our assembly member here, Sam, if you'd like to come say a few words. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I'm Assemblyman Sam Pirazzolo. Commissioner, it's a pleasure to meet you, and everyone, thank you for inviting me down. Uh, I just want everybody to take a look around. It's a beautiful day. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell Nick in a few minutes to issue a good weather alert, just so people know that they can come out and everything is all right. 
Uh, but sometimes it's not a good day like this. Sometimes Mother Nature really pounds us very, very hard. And we can talk about notable events like Sandy, Maria, or all these hurricanes, and this is the beginning of hurricane season, but it does not have to be a hurricane. I have constituents within my district, anytime it rains, they have fear. They're displaced from their homes. There's all sorts of problems. So it is very, very important, uh, you know, I think as far as a go bag is concerned, a couple of days clothes, a little bit of water, some food. But most importantly, and this happened during Sandy, uh, I was uh, president of the CEC at the time, was your medications. Adults need to know, or children on medication, take your medications with you. That was the biggest problem we had. Everybody fled their home. It was one of the biggest problems we had. Everybody fled their home, and you know we're up at um, Susan Wagner, and I'm on the phone with different types of pharmacies, and they brought uh, nurses and, and doctors in to see if they could prescribe just from someone saying, this is the medication that I take. So there are a lot of things to be uh, prepared for, but it's really not that hard. Just a small go bag, and then the other thing is you tell your family, your son, your children, your wife, whoever it is, that in the event something happens, we will meet at this location, because when it's automatic and everybody knows, it's going to take a lot of stress off. So again, look around. It's a beautiful day. They're not all like that. And that's what this event is for, is to get us prepared for the days that are not. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Selena. Um, so this concludes our speaking part of our event. Uh, we are also joined here by New York State. And you can see the types of partnerships it takes for emergency management to be successful. Uh, we not only need to build and maintain clo close partnerships with the state and federal level, but also with the local community and nonprofit organizations. Thank everyone here for what they do. National Preparedness Month is just starting. NISIM has many other events that are coming up this month. Please take time, some time to prepare so that you are ready when and if an emergency happens. Thank you very much. And we'll take some on-topic questions from members of the press, if anyone has any questions. Hearing none, good to go. All right, thanks everyone.